and now a property of rotating objects called precession that you can understand with angular momentum. I'm going to give precession the simple definition of falling with style. We'll get a more mathematical definition going later, but for now that's really what it is because the way to first start thinking about precession, I think, is to think about people who just got married. Okay, so when you're no longer in school and you go to work somewhere and you're around lots of adults, it's easy to pick out the newlyweds because they have this wedding ring, this new wedding ring, and they're not used to wearing it. And a lot of times they might not be used to wearing any jewelry. So whichever person you see sitting there doing this all day, kind of fidgeting, they just got married. And they have this ring they're not used to wearing. They also become obsessed with playing with it. So you might see somebody at a desk in their cubicle and they'll sit there and try to balance it and then they'll spin it and see how long it stays up. So there's lots of procession going on in uh, these circumstances. So we're going to start thinking about procession by thinking about balancing a ring. Okay? Okay, so here we go. So here's our ring. Now it's important to think about the properties of a ring. So we're talking about one that's curved on the surface. In addition to being a circle that your finger goes through, the outer surface is kind of curved. So if I draw it that way, you can see that it's going to be hard to balance the ring on a surface, right? Because you got a curved thing here on a flat thing there. But let's imagine you could. So let's say here's the ring. It's sitting on a surface like this. The round part is this way, right? The hole is that way. This is the side of the ring. Okay, so we're not even going to spin it yet. Let's just ask ourselves, can we balance it this way? What is the angular momentum? What's the torques involved? What would it take? So if we had it like this, what would the forces on the ring be? Well, you would have mg down, and you would have a normal force up, equal and opposite to mg. So the weight down, the normal force up. And if we did just sort of 1D forces, those would be balanced, and the thing would just sit there. But we want to consider what if it could rotate around this point. We want to know if it's going to fall over. So I'm going to draw those vectors a little shorter, uh, but still equal and opposite. And we want to think about this right here. Can we make it sit there? Let me see if I can. So I'm going to take the ring. So you'll see them at their desk doing this as well. And they're going to sit there and see, you know, if I get it just right, can I get it to stick? If I balance it, oh, the table's old. The ring is curved. Look at that, I did it. I put tape there. There's a little piece of tape. Really, it's actually very hard to make a ring sit like that. And let's think about why. If you could hit this perfect level, you could say, okay, is this thing going to fall over? Let's look at the torque, uh, the T, uh, from gravity. And from the normal force. But it's all due to the fact that this thing has weight. So we're going to say, remember, torque... Uh, let's do, let's see, the normal force, uh, force, and the one from the gravitational force. Okay, for the normal force, let's look at here. We're talking about the, the torque around this point. Now, one another thing I want to point out is in the previous learning sequence, we talked about how rotation is always around an axis. Well, really, it's around a point. If we're talking about torques, you calculate multiple torques around a point that are around different axes. The axis part is defined by the torque. Right, between, you'll see, we're going to do the cross section or the, or the cross product of two vectors. That gives you the axis. But really, we care about a point. And the point we care about is where the round ring touches the surface. So for the normal force, the torque uh, is the R vector from the point uh, uh, of rotation to where the point is, the force is applied, R cross N. And it equals zero for the normal force. And the reason it's zero is the magnitude of R is the zero. So R is zero in that case. And the reason is the force is being applied at the point of rotation. So you can't get a torque there. Let's look at the torque from gravity here. So now R will be bigger. Here is the point of rotation, and here's where the force is applied. <coughs> okay, so now R is a zero. R cross mg. But this one will also be zero. In this case, if it's perfectly balanced, It'll be zero because theta, in this case, equals 180 degrees. 
if you think about the angle between this r vector and this mg vector, they're parallel opposite directions in this case. So you'd have the sine of the angle between them, the sine of 180 is zero. So in both cases, you have no torque. The torque equals zero. That's why it would balance if you could get it perfectly uh, level like that. There'd be no torque pulling it one way or the other, and it would balance in principle. In reality, no surface is perfectly smooth, and you have to use a little bit of tape if you want it to actually balance. So that's one thing you can do with your wedding ring, but we know that nothing lasts forever, not even a diamond lasts forever. So we know what really happens here is you can't balance it. If you sit here and you try to hold it, it's always going to fall over because it's always at some teeny angle. So let's calculate that torque just to get used to thinking about this effect. Well, I've got to keep that on. Uh, let's see. So now we have uh, the ring like this. And here's your point of contact down here. That's the rotation, the point of rotation that we're trying to go around here. And let's see, so now we would say, okay, the normal force is going to be up like that. The MG is still at the center of mass like that. All right. And now let's look at the torques. Um, so from the normal force, it's still zero for the same reason. The normal force acts at the point where we're trying to calculate the rotation around. So the R magnitude in that case, I can't draw it because it's zero. But here, now, okay, so now there is the new R value for the gravitational one. All right, so that R value crossed with mg, and that is not zero. That uh, is not zero. It's now at some angle. If we put this tail to tail, you can see it's not at 180. It's at some angle, whatever the angle of the ring is, uh, minus 180. So if that's not equal to zero, then uh, the torque, um, which is equal to dl dt, the rate of change of angular momentum, is not equal to zero. So what this really means is that under these conditions, even if you hold it still, even if it has no angular momentum, in every axis, the angular momentum is zero, it will start to increase its angular momentum. It will pick up angular momentum. And the direction of the increase in the angular momentum will be along the direction of the torque. And which way is the torque? R crossed to mg. It's into the board. There's the torque. So at some time, you build up an L into the board. And which way is the rotation due to that L? Fingers along the L, oh, it's down. Right. So when the ring falls over, it's just building up angular momentum because there's a torque and because DL dt is positive. So that's what happens when the ring is not spinning. So next we'll look at what happens when you've spun the ring. Why does it fall differently?